this example we're just going to look at how to um, build an assembly with links between the parts to um, drive it all from the assembly. What we're going to use is an enclosure and we'll draw um, an open profile. So I'll start with the line command, go to the top plane and hit the F3 key to lock it and Control H to um, just um, move it out a little bit. And I'll start over here, just quickly draw a rough profile. And then I'll use my horizontal vertical to um, just constrain it so it's going to stay symmetrical while in the sketch mode. So when I'm changing my dimensions, it will maintain that nicely for me. So if I start off on these smaller sides, we'll make them 300. side and make that a thousand and we'll make this say eighteen hundred so if I um, close out of here go back to my isometric and we can use the contour flange and we'll go um, in both directions and give it a height of say twelve hundred Now, notice that these dimensions are all um, locked, and that gives us the ability to um, work with them later on. Um, so what I need to do now is just uh, draw a line, because I'm going to draw a flange around the top, and just get the right face here to work with. And make this 80 long. And again, we'll use the contour flange into a direction. And as we pick on the extra edges, that will give us our um, flange that we can um, work with at the top. So the right mouse click to accept. And then what I want to do is just add a final dimension on here. And again, if I hit the next key, um, it allows me to put in these other dimensions. So we'll add that in. And under the Tools menu, we've got the Variable Table. So um, there's our box height. And 1000 was the box width. And uh, that's just to make things easier later on when we're looking for our dimensions. So if we save this, we'll call it box. Stage is to create a panel that's going to sit along the front here. So we'll go in and create a new sheet metal component and um, back in the home table we'll do a, a rectangle by center and we'll choose the uh, side plane and we'll just key in the values that we want 1000 by 600 and we'll fit that click on the um, area drag it out um, if we want to change the direction, we just click on the arrow, but uh, we'll come forward. And like the other part, what we'll do is we'll add in some dimensions. Um, again, they need to be locked. And we will use our variable table again. And Right. And width. Then we can save that part out.
to build the assembly. So if I go back to the um, box um, section that I had earlier on, um, what I can do is I can go straight from here and go create assembly, and that places this straight in the assembly for me. And then I can go back to my parts library and uh, we can find the panel and drag it in. So we just want to do uh, the simple stuff. Put a mate onto there, change to a planar and line. And likewise we'll place one at the bottom. So if we go control C and control V, um, it just speeds up the um, process a little bit. So this time I'm going to um, align it with the bottom so that we have our um, assembly like so. This final stage we want to just build some variables that we can use to drive the other models. And first thing you need to do is make sure that you've got the assembly saved. And then under the tools menu, we have our peer variables and the active model is the actual assembly file that we're in. And we'll create three variables. So we can have a height, which is 1200. We can have a width, which will be 1000. And we can have a panel height, which we'll use as um, height divided by 2, which will then form our formula. So we need to use these to um, link to the model. So as I say, if you haven't saved the assembly, then this isn't going to work. So for the height, we can right mouse click, copy link, and then we can pick up on the component that we want to work with and that exposes the variables within that part. So there's our box height, and we paste that link, and that value should change to uh, match what the assembly value was. Then what we can do is go back to the assembly and take the panel height, copy link on that, and this time we choose our panel, and um, there's our height and we can paste the link on that so now when we go back to um, the assembly relationships if we change our height value to say 1400 and update all links What you find is that the panels will now match the um, assembly uh, height, so that um, we can we can now drive that fine. Second part of the exercise is I'm, I want to drive the um, width of the panel from the box. So if we go back to our peer variables and we click on here we've got the box width. We can go copy link on there and pick up the piano panel and do a paste link. Now the two are tied together but what I want to do is modify it by um, modifying the geometry in the assembly. Now I can't actually do that while the dimension is locked. 
Um, so if we go back to our model here, and in here we've got our um, box width. So we just want to unlock that. So that now allows me to modify this. So if we save that and switch back to our assembly, what I can do um, under the home tab, you can see that the select tool allows us to go between part priority, which means it will pick the part to modify, um, or face. So we can modify a face of the um, component while we're moving. So if I pick up on this face here, I can now modify um, the edge here and bring it out, say, 200 mil bigger than it was. Now you see that this hasn't updated. Um, that just needs to have a update all links, and because it's driven through that variable, um, this now modifies. So we've got two modes of which we can work with on the um, variables to lock an assembly together and have everything drive um, as you would expect.